Welcome to this episode of The Journal. I'm your host, Nick Farazzoli. And I'm your other host, Ryan Hunter McConnell. Today, our show will focus on something that nurtures both our bodies and souls, food. You know, food is something that creates community. It ties culture, family, and friends. It can even become a meditative process. From a couple that fell in love in making food, we'll then dive into a family journey of sharing recipes through generations. We'll also learn about the efforts of making food at home and how cooking with friends is not only about the love of food, but also the food of love. Ryan, how poetic. Thank you. I specialize in poetry and eating. Well, that's great, because I have a little surprise prepared for you to expand your food horizons. Wait, what? That is not on my contract. Tell me, Ryan, what do you think is greater? The love you have for food or the love you have for a person? I'm sure that nothing can top the love I have for steak, but imagine someone to share that steak with. That is my dream. That does really sound like a dream. But that's exactly what we're going to do and see on our first doc about a couple who came to Canada and fulfilled their lifetime dreams of owning an independent bakery and cafe together. Uh, Maitri Roy Chowdhury and I am the co-owner of Frosted Flavors alongside my husband Arta Ghosh. We both are trained chefs. I'm a pastry chef and Arta is a chef. We always have been dreaming about owning a cafe or a cake shop and finally our dreams came true last year in April 2022 and it's been a, a very pleasant journey so far. We do specialize in custom cakes, celebration cakes, wedding cakes, and dessert platters. But we also serve coffee and other drinks alongside some gourmet sandwiches, which are very well known in the neighborhood. And we also serve some desserts and breakfast pastries. Among the drinks, we have our signature masala chai, which is a traditional South Asian drink. And we steep the milk on a stove pot and we crush our own spices and put it in the milk and let it steep for some time along with the tea leaves, and then we strain the whole mixture. It's one of the most popular drinks in Frosted Flavors. Because it's a neighborhood cafe, pretty much 98% of people are from the neighborhood, and that's what I think is the most beautiful part of this cafe. Every person walking in, we know them very well, and they know us very well too. They're cooking the sandwiches and stuff, like especially the chicken tikka. Since we live on the third floor, our windows are always open. And we can just smell it, it's just mouthwatering. It is by far the best thing to wake up to. It's a very beautiful relationship with us and our customers. The community supports us a lot. We love supporting our community as well. There are a lot of times, there's so many schools close by and there are bake sales happening at school. We are a part of that, sometimes a part of Toronto Human Society as well. It's all well-binded in the community. We were planning to have a baby or else we were planning to have bought a house or we have to open up a cafe. We said that, okay, let's go for it. Let's give us, us a try because uh, this is our, was our dream since we were a teenager, actually. Maitri, she is taking care of all the sweet part as she is the sweetest person on earth. Maitri always, always has a smile. I wouldn't run this cafe with anyone else beside my side. <laughs> What we have here is Frosted Flavors Mashala Chai. I'm so glad that we get to try it. <sighs> so good. It is. Yep. And delicious. I mean, it's just so unique and strong. Just like the relationship that Maitri and Arka have. It seems I'm not the only poet here tonight. <laughs> but all jokes aside, the fact that they're adding a cultural element to their bakery really makes it special. It does. And speaking of culture, did you know that I'm half Greek? Really? Just like Jennifer Aniston? 
You know she released a new movie of Adam Sandler recently, right? Oh, really? I actually didn't know that. But wait, let's not get off topic. As I was saying, food and culture are closely linked together. Our next documentary focuses on culinary traditions that feed the soul, like passing recipes from generation to generation. Hi, my name is Rula Katrakis Ferrazzoli. I'm in my 40s. We don't say the F word around here. A mom of three, an educator, and I love cooking and baking Greek foods, especially the ones taught to me by my mom and my grandmother. I was a child of immigrant Greek parents who their family business was the restaurant business. So of course, my life was embedded in that restaurant business. Now, because my parents had a restaurant and they were really busy, I was lucky enough to have my grandmother and my grandfather help raise me. And what a better cook to learn from than your grandmother. Some meals that I've grown up enjoying and that I have now tried to learn myself so I can cook for my kids is basitio, moussaka, avgolemono, yevrelakia, uh, some baked goods like kulurakia, tsureki, melomakarona, kurabiedes, those Meals are things that are very ethnic and traditional to my Greek background, but just so absolutely yummy. Some of the activities I loved doing with my children when they were younger was bringing them into the kitchen to help me with baking some of those special Christmas or Easter sweets or treats. Perfect. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I would never measure. She would just eyeball it. Yeah, you're totally right. There's 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 any measuring cup. Even with the even with the flour. I it's, know. It says no, 11. That seems a lot right. Yeah. It says 11, but it, she says metomati, uh -huh. right? With the eye. Yeah. Also kratai, as much as it holds. For example, Easter kulurakia. It's probably one of the favorite foods that the kids love making. And so I brought them into the kitchen because I knew it was important for them to not only help their mom, because I think all kids should learn to help their mom in the kitchen, but for me, it was just having them share in the joy of baking together, especially these traditional Greek cookies. We might need to just... No more, no more licking your fingers. <laughs> okay, so everybody grab a ball. And if you need to enroll it towards you, try and leave them to be about the same thickness and about that big each. And then in half, and then braid them, like kind of twist them over each other. And what we're going to do is we're going to egg wash the top of the little cookies. Look, here you go, the tray's here. already. is done. Mm. Mm, they're so soft and I love the little glaze. I was lucky enough that my grandmother visited us in Canada for many, many years, even after I got married and had my own kids. And so they got to grow up with a great grandmother. So I remember one time her asking us to gather together and not just my children, but their first cousins and all of us gathered in the kitchen to make homemade rolled out tiropites and spanakopites. I mean, that was a great experience. And we've got them all rolling out the dough helping with the cheese filling, using the pasta maker to flatten out the dough, a cup to cut out the pitas into their half dome shapes, pinching the edges of the dough with the edge of the fork, frying them, oh, eating them when they were so warm, came out of the oil. It was oh, just such a memory, I could taste it right now. Yeah. Those are the memories that I know that my kids still have. And I love that I've created those memories with them and for them and through photographs and video and just being together. I want that thread of family and love and food to take them throughout their life. Though food might be the obvious thread, for me the most important thread is love and family. And I can just picture my dad, sometimes he would sit back and cross his arms and just watch us. And he would tell the kids, this, this is what I love. So, do you have any practical experience 
any practical experience. Any practical experience? Yeah, I, I went to Centennial. Five, four, three, two. Doesn't everybody? Greek food just looks superior, but I don't know if it tastes better than the Canadian food, to be honest, Nick. Well, why don't we put that to the test? I mean, I brought us a little treat from Serrano Bakery, a Greek bakery on paper, for us to try. Nick, you really didn't have to. Oh, but I did. I'm expanding your food horizons, remember? The only thing I remember is you not telling me what's going to happen to me later. What's this? It's called Kulurakia. This cookie is so good. Told you. I'm glad you like it. You know, the only thing that bothers me about food is the amount of money you have to spend if you want to go out and buy it. Like, all the time. Well, eating out is always very comfortable and delicious, but don't underestimate the amazing recipes you can cook at home. Coming up is a story of Manuel Arias, a Dominican self-educated chef that finds comfort in the kitchen perfecting his recipes. My name is Manuel Arias. I'm originally from the Dominican Republic. I'm currently working here as a market research analyst, but I used to work as a cook, actually, when I first got here in Toronto. Uh, for me, I would say food means um, an expression of creativity and some, it's a sort of, uh, I would say, de-stressor or, or hobby for me, I would say. Uh, I really enjoy doing it. I feel that the more time I spend doing it, the better I get with most of my skills. And I just love giving the sense to people that the food that I'm making, it's enjoyable and they can have a good time. And food is, it brings people together. So I, I think that that's one of the main reasons uh, which I started doing it. So all this, uh, let's say, techniques, so to speak, I learned, like I said, just by eating. Yeah, I would say it's, uh, some people say it's stressing, it, I mean it is obviously, but when you're cooking at home, it's, I would say it's a relaxing experience. Uh, there have been times that I come from, let's say, work or anything at 6, 7 p.m. and I just want to make a good home-cooked meal. And it, I would take like, let's say, an hour, an hour and a half to just get everything ready. Obviously, if, if, I'm, if I'm really tired, I just do something quick in like 15 minutes. But that sense of, like, it doesn't bother me having to, let's say, prep all the ingredients, cut everything, start cooking, uh, and then get a final plate together in like an hour and yeah I feel it's also that part and then also the, the dishwashing it's it's kind of uh, therapeutic I would say. Come into play some people might start with the meat just browning it and that's a good idea I like to go with the aromatics first to build that base of, of flavor so we go in with the with the onions first Might not look as good. That's that's I think one of the one of the areas that I'm working on. Uh, I still have to work on making the, the plates presentable enough. I would say, but taste wise, it's pretty good. <laughs> and so, obviously, there are some other complicated stuff like. Sourdough, uh, I don't know, I, I know it was a, like a craze <laughs> during the start of the pandemic. I never got into it, but I'm starting now, and it's, it's, it's really hard actually. <laughs> like, I haven't deciphered it yet, but it's fun. You get into do stuff, test out. What do you have over there, Ryan? Well, I got a little inspired by Manuel and decided to create my own chili cheese fries recipe. Look at you, buddy. <laughs> Let me give this thing a try. Yeah. Yeah? Mmm, that's delicious. You know, I'm a great chef. <laughs> Guys, please give me five stars on Yelp. What did you just say? 
I didn't say any of it. Well, Ryan, I definitely think that cooking alone takes a lot of experience and skill, but you want to know what I think is the ultimate cooking experience? Cooking with friends. You are totally right, Nick. It's a moment where food and love collide. And that's what our next documentary is about. Hi, my name is Maria and I'm an international student from Mexico. When I arrived here to Canada, I fell in love with the international scene. One of the things that I enjoy the most is eating. So getting to know new dishes was something amazing for me. I have this group of friends that we get together and we cook this dish called hot pot, which is basically hot broth and you get raw ingredients and you heat up the broth and you cook everything in it while you're eating. I have this friend Ya Chao, who's from Taiwan, and she's usually the one that takes the initiative on choosing the ingredients and choosing the broth. So I want to switch it up a bit and I want to take the initiative myself. We're gonna go to an Asian supermarket. I hope that it's not gonna be very chaotic. I'm gonna have Ya Chao's help, so I don't go rogue. Hopefully it'll turn out fine and I don't poison my friends, so let's, let's go and see how it goes. There are a lot of different types of noodles. Yeah. This is usually the part which I get more anxious because there's like so many options. Yeah, this is another our traditional noodle. Where is the Guan famous? Guan Miao is the place. Who is famous about this noodle? Oh, I see. It says yeah. made in Taiwan. Yes. Okay, and so in this side we have our soup bases. Hot pot soup base spicy? No. Base plain. Oh, I see a mushroom over here. Yeah, it's a mushroom base. See, I don't, I don't think I would be this lost if it where a regular supermarket, but just being here and seeing so many different sauces, so many different flavors of stuff, I'm like lost. Yeah. This is a very large carrot. Bok choy. Yeah. This one, I like. Yeah. Shanghai and Nai, Nai Yu. I don't want to butcher the name, but... Yeah, but the, it's the... What is the difference? They just, uh, here is a white part and this is a green part. But the, the test similar. Tastes similar? Yeah, okay. so you can pick up whatever you want. You tried that in Chinese restaurant before and uh, you love it. She knows more about what I eat than yeah. I do. Wow! Less than a hundred dollars. I cannot believe you. This is going to be my next supermarket, like, for everything. Let's go, I'm excited. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but okay. the steps that we need to take this is, like, washing the veggies, cutting them, putting them into plates, unfreezing the fish balls and the meatballs and the shrimp, which are frozen. Yeah. And after we prepare all that, we start with the broths. We put them... Okay. See, I'm, I'm not that lost. Um. And then we just finish shutting first. You need to rotate it first. And, okay. You want to try? Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Before I add anything. See, I'm not that big of a fan of tofu, but I'll, I trust you. I'll try a little first. Normally we eat that with uh, kanji. <laughs> on a scale on, of 1 to 10, uh, how much of a good cook do you think I am? <laughs> I think the first time I met you, maybe 2. I think now you are 7. Seven is my favorite number, so I don't see the problem with that. We're done with the prepping! I'm so ready. 
To me, food is like a love language. You get to choose to show love with everything that you prepare. You, you're you putting your time, your effort on, on everything that you do. I gotta say that, yeah, ciao. You've taught me a lot about how food is, is something really special, something to share. And I do sense that Hot Pot has that quality of sharing that love of making food together with people that you care. Yes? It's good? Well, I guess that concludes that the best food you can have is the ones that you make with your friends. As Ryan mentioned at the beginning, it's not only the love of food that unites you, but also the food of love. But anyways, instead of getting all romantic here, let's go to our remote location where our boy Ryan is with Maria Rodriguez, who can tell us firsthand about her experience making hot pot for the first time. Thank you so much, Nick. And everyone, let's welcome Maria. Hi, Ryan. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Maria, what was the most exciting part about shopping in an Asian supermarket? Well, you know, uh, I would I would say that it was getting to know the many different uh dishes that I didn't know that existed <laughs> and obviously when you're shopping in a nation supermarket everything is like in Asian, different. yeah everything yeah. is different everything is like on a nation language so when I was looking at a package I was just seeing like graphics you know? <laughs> I didn't know what that meant did you get lost totally yeah. oh no totally uh, like I, I didn't know where the things were uh, or what things were so it was really helpful having uh, Ya Chao there with me she was really patient and she helped me sort through like the flavors of stuff, what everything meant and and it was it was at the end of the day we got out of there alive <laughs> and and we could get everything that we needed for the dish. It seems like you had an amazing guide. Yeah, it yeah. was amazing. Now Maria, I know that you're Mexican, so could you tell us all some similarities and differences between the Mexican kitchen culture and Asian? Well, that's a great question, uh, Ryan. Uh, I wanna say that both in Mexican and Asian culture, we don't actually cook following the recipe step really? by step. Yeah, no. Wow. We we kind of like improvise. It's it's fun and uh -huh. and it's like if you're craving something, you add a little bit more of that. Or if you if you feel like uh, you need to add more water, like even if the recipe doesn't state mm -hmm. it, it's like yeah, no, let's let's do it. You know. And a difference though is the fact that for Mexican food. You just need ba like the basic ingredients like cheese, tortillas, mm -hmm. chicken, salsa, and you can cook like mm -hmm. seven different dishes with that. <laughs> While in uh, Asian culture, you have so many ingredients and they're so rich and, and you, can, you can have a dish with a lot of character. And so I would say that the Asian culture uses more ingredients. I'll be sure to change up how I cook my meals now. No, that, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Asian's the way to go. <laughs> that also sounds so delicious. Now, last question, and I'm sorry to do this to you, but I have to ask this. What are the, what's the most difficult part of filming your doc? Well, I want to say definitely uh, directing, producing, mm -hmm. and being on camera as well. Yeah. But I had an amazing team behind me in camera, editing, producing, sound. It helped me a lot. That you did. Thank you so much, Maria. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thinking about my future, I didn't know what to do. But Centennial College guided me. Story Arts Center gave me so much more than I expected. Being here gave me many opportunities like being industry connected. But those connections will always lead me back to my community here. Well, that's our story. What will yours be? What in the name of Gordon Ramsay is happening here? Take a seat, Ryan. Tell me, are you a picky eater? Well, I guess it depends on the food, I guess. I'm not gonna poison you or anything, but I'll definitely make sure that you try some new things in this segment called Strange Combinations. Oh God. Okay, now stand still, Ryan. Okay. I'm gonna put this blindfold on. This is kind of kinky, I won't lie, Nick. Now, uh, why am I being blindfolded again? Because you see, you're gonna be trying on, trying four unique food combinations. You're gonna test them without knowing what they are, and you're just gonna tell us if you like them. 
Sounds good? It sounds good. I'm not gonna lie though, I'm a bit scared, but also excited. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So we're gonna try our plate number one. Are okay. you ready? Can you feed me please? Of course. <laughs> okay, uh... Ryan, but not. What do you think? What does this, it taste this like? This is disgusting. This is do you terrible. Like, do you like the texture? No. Oh. oh, God, I hate every ounce of this. Okay, do you have your final guess ready? I think it's an Oreo and mayo. I can't tell though. So close. Oh. Okay, so it was Oreo, but it was mustard on top. Oh my God, okay. I hate mustard. Drop it. <sighs> okay, oh. now we're gonna move on to plate number two. All right. You ready? Yep, I'm so ready. Uh. Ready? Uh-huh. Bite down. Oh, no, I lie, this is so much worse. Oh. What does it taste like? I could even tell you, it, it's just a terrible taste. The texture is also just gooey, slimy. It felt so weird in my mouth. Oh, oh. Was, that, was there also mustard on that? No, it's close. It oh. was actually mango and some tahini. <sighs> okay, now are you ready for your third? <laughs> no. I believe in you, Ryan. Here we go. Okay. I'm ready. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Ready? Open up. Uh -huh. Um, this is the best one by far. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Describe what is it? What does it feel like? You're... Um, it was a nice texture. I'm not gonna lie. It was easy to chew on. Okay. Not too much taste. Um, I think I know what one of the ingredients is, but I have no idea what the I guess the okay. sauce is. And give me your final guess. Uh, a banana and barbecue sauce. Oh, so close. It was banana and ketchup. Okay. I'm terrible gonna, at this. We're gonna move on to our final plate. Oh, thank God, finally. Excited? No way. Okay, Ryan, here you go. Uh, I believe in you. You got this. I have. Okay, I, ready? Yep, I'm ready. Open. Uh-huh. Come on, Ryan. What oh. does it taste like? Yeah. It's so salty. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. That's definitely like watermelon and a shitload of salt. Ryan, you got that right. Oh. Okay, good job, Ryan. You got one out of four, but that's okay. Mm. You did a good job. I'll try better next time. Okay, Ryan, I'm gonna take the blindfold off of you now. Please do. Oh. I'm not sure what I was expecting there, but I appreciate you, I think, for expanding my food horizons. You were great, Ryan. Oh. And this brings us to the end of our show, where we were able to discover that eating isn't just out of necessity, but also as an expression of art and love. And as Chef Marco Pierre White would say, cooking is not a philosophy, it's a recipe. Oh, Ryan, you never cease to amaze me with your wonderful poetry. Thanks everyone for watching, and catch us on our next episode of The Journal, where we'll be talking about music and resilience. You don't want to miss that. And that's all for today, folks. We're signing off.